Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chaitali Bagh from the European Bureau of Aviation and Defense Universe based out of Cyprus. As technological growth in Indian defense arena is advancing by leaps and bounds, one cannot forget the contribution of professionals from the defense forces who post their careers embarked onto second innings with the aim to make India Atmanirbhar or self-reliant. Colonel Kanbir Singh retired, the founder director of FC Tech Energy is one such veteran who continued this journey of serving the interest of the armed forces. The year was 2016, when with a handful of professionals, the company embarked on the journey to create a market for methanol-based fuel cells in India. We have with us the man himself to peep into this journey. ADU has a pleasure to welcome Colonel Karandeep Singh in his chat room. Welcome, sir. And to take this discussion forward and to know more about this journey, we have with us editor ADU Sangeeta Saxena. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you so much, Chaitali. Uh, Colonel Singh, wonderful to have you here on ADU's chat room with us. Thank you, Sangeeta. Not only, yes, not only the fact that we have somebody who is a veteran and has gone into a uh, you know, field which is energy, but the fact that we have a veteran who was an infantry guy and has gone into a technical field. And of course, the best, which I always feel is that, uh, you know, our army officers, once they retire and come into the foray of the civilian arena, actually give a lot to the society. So, you know, with that background with us and whatever Chetali has told us, we are starting from here. You know, the fact is, that you have a very interesting name. And we'd like to understand that how does this name come forth? How did the idea come forth to start this company? Okay, thank you, Sangeeta, for the kind words. And of course, uh, Chatali for initially welcoming me on the show. It's my pleasure and honor to be talking to you both today. Uh, well, um, as far as the idea of getting into energy, getting into fuel cells. I mean, it just happened. There was no plan. There was no intent. It was purely coincidental that basically, I mean, uh, somewhere around 2012 or so, I got introduced up, a couple of years after having left uh, the army. I was had initially set up another small venture of mine, which was more from the manpower services. But also I worked for a while with an IT company, which gave me a fair insight into technology. And later on, what happened, I was a consultant with an energy company. I don't know how they took me as a consultant for what, I have no idea. But that exposed me to the great future of what energy lies ahead, how to save the planet, people moving, trying to go into cleaner forms of energy. And uh, the bug bit me. I said, I want to do something here. But within a couple of months, I realized that we would not stand any chance because almost Thousands and thousands of small and big companies were all into solar, into wind, and, and so many other forms of energy that I really did not see any space for myself. I mean, I don't know what I could do there. I also typically do not follow by nature. Probably I do not walk on a beaten path. I do not walk where or what. I try to do things different. And somebody just happened to, uh, you know, introduced to me that this technology of fuel cells, they said, why don't you look at this, this is also very interesting. So I started the presentation, I saw it and I found it very interesting. And I said, if this is true, this could play a very significant part going forward uh, in shaping the way the world looks at green energy. So next two years was spent, I dived deep, I started studying, I started traveling, I started attending shows, virtual, real, offline, online, and got to understand a fair bit about uh, fuel cells. That is from 2013 to till end of 2014. I interacted with a number of fuel cell companies in India and abroad. And by 2014 end and early 2015, I formed a basis of an initial partner with a, a German company and who asked me to come down and I traveled to Germany to get my uh, training done on fuel cells. And that led to the next step where, you know, finally after about a year or so, that early 2016, I formally launched the venture that time we were about me plus two more people and we tried to incubate it. So that was the beginning of 
how we went about it. And at that point of time, from 2014 to 16, 17, everybody was telling me not to do it. Why you should not do it? Why it will not work? What are the challenges? What is different about it? But somehow I was convinced that it is the future and I'm on the right path. I just ignored every advice that was given to me and I just went ahead and tried to do it. <laughs> Actually, that's a wonderful journey, you know, and uh, I just wanted to understand one thing that uh, is fuel cell technology very much in uh, Indian uh, technology arena or it's something new and, uh, you know, we've got it from abroad, yes, but are we using it in India quite a bit? Not really, ma'am. We, we are the first ones in India to actually sell fuel cells, especially for the defense and security forces. There was nobody has introduced this to them before. And probably even on the fuel cells, when we were doing it in earlier, there were no takers. And people used when you used to start talking about hydrogen, people used to make fun, hey, oh, what is this and all that. Literally like that. Today, what has happened is uh, com companies as big as Tata's, Reliance, Adani's, Serum Institute of India, Hero Motors, Jindal Group, almost everybody is getting into hydrogen and fuel cells in some form. So that is a transformation which is taken at a great pace that you've seen the biggest industry players coming into this space of trying to get into this market and investing hundreds and thousands of crores have been pledged by them to, in this technology. So now to make it in India, I mean, of course, but uh, the technology adoption is going to take some time, but to initially, initially collaborate with others and get them here and then to start making it with them, that's the general plan almost everyone has at this point of time. Right. And, uh, you know, the most exciting part about your company is its name. Now, everybody's trying to, you know, find their own way to pronounce it. So what is actually FC Technology? How did you come to the idea of this name? You know, it's very interesting. The name, actually, I mean, uh, it was, I think my daughter gave this name. So she suggested it. I mean, we were just brainstorming. And she said FC means fuel cells. Tech is technology, TEC, we use the short form and we made energy silent with NRGY. So instead of the E taking out. And so that's how, and now migrating to make it shorter, people generally call us FCT wherever we go. So the further as we brand ourselves, we're getting better. So we started being called more like FCT energy. So it's, we call ourselves and something like a energy technology company. I mean, that's how we would like to be known because we are, doing a lot of innovations in this. We are doing a lot of research and development in-house now within our own premises. So that's the, I mean, <laughs> that's the background. <laughs> no, that's very nice and creative, actually, if you see, you know, it's very nice. And, uh, you know, because the backdrop uh, at the moment is self-reliance in Indian defense, I just wanted to understand, is that technology used in defense? Is there a foray you have planned for defense in India? Yes, actually, uh, my initial thought when I had limited knowledge, I could relate it to some of the applications where it could be extremely useful for the defense forces because up ahead in remote areas, especially, power is one of the biggest challenges which all the armed forces face. By power, I mean reliable power, power which is not having too many fluctuations. It remains a major challenge today. And that is why there is very high potential going forward for multiple applications for the defense, other than the civilian application that we are already planning for and going to work forward in the years to come. So the defense remains an attractive market for this technology because it is probably a unique technology which is at this juncture probably the only one which can reliably meet their needs because, for example, solar up in the mountains, it starts raining, solar is gone. If you don't have any wind, the wind, you stop. So what do you do? So finally, they rely on old generators. Generators pack up and they, they are not very reliable. And now, on top of that is added the problem that with India's, go, India's global commitments at the COP summit in Glasgow last year, where the Prime Minister has committed to uh, reducing 45% carbon emissions in India by 2030, which is a very bold statement. It requires a lot of action to be done by various stakeholders across the country. So many things will be seeing a major shift in how energy is going to be used in the coming years. 
And uh, Colonel Sir, one thing which is important to understand that we have a very huge paramilitary and police forces with the similar sort of environs like the defense forces. Do we have a lot of projects with them? Uh, do they have a lot of need for the fuel cell technology? Uh, they also have similar needs and uh, we've already been working with them also. We've, we've done a fair amount of business already with the paramilitary forces already uh, as we speak. And there are some new programs that we are working with them. And some of them, especially if I talk about the ones like SSB, the Seema Shastra Bal, or the ITBP, the Indo-Tibetan Border Police, and even CRPF and others have a huge need for such systems going forward. And we are already closely working, and also uh, not to, uh, I mean, I forgot to mention also Assam Rifles. And, uh, you know, uh, we have a very major interest in the civilian aerospace area. So uh, do you have plans to, you know, branch out into civilian aerospace requirements? Is there a scope? Sangeeta and Dawan, actually, uh, uh, we are working with in certain areas, not exactly with them right now, but we have tried to initially have some contacts with the this thing, uh, with the civilian aerospace side. Initially, also now we're looking at probably helping them, especially for remote airfields, power solutions is a big challenge, which are in far flung areas, smaller tier two cities, tier three cities. That is one up in the mountains, smaller airfields are coming up where are having these uh, remote connectivity flights are going in. There are solutions that are ideal for them. Also, going forward, in the next five to seven years, we'll see a major shift with all organizations, including the, the civilian aerospace, also needing to replace their generator sets. That is another place that where we could come in. And third, which could be for their security solutions along the fencing of the airfields, the sensors which are there, that could also be in a potential area. But frankly, we haven't done much in this area. Another reason being, being a small outfit, about limited bandwidth, where all can we go? So that is sometimes also a limiting factor for someone like us. Absolutely. But then, you know, we'll keep our fingers crossed that you don't, next time that we interview, you don't say limited bandwidth. And I'm sure it'll expand. You know, this it's a new technology. And, uh, you know, people are looking for change from the traditional. Traditional at times has its own limitations. You know, so any new technology is always welcome. Now, you know, we'll talk about something which has been the talk of the town. You know, we have been hearing about a strategic agreement you have signed with Bell, Bharat Electronics. Uh, what is it? We'd like to really know about it. I mean, the agreement with Bell Mem is to basically jointly address the, the defense market, all the three defense forces, the, the Army, Air Force, Navy, and of course, also the Homeland Security market. Now, the advantage here is, again, because many times SMEs initially probably look at partners like the PSUs, like Bell, especially in the defense market, because of their strong reach, their big programs they're already embedded in, into already, where you can jointly co-work with them. And also, the it eases the entry barriers for someone like us, because uh, this market is something which takes very long to crack. We got our... I mean, for the first order with, with the paramilitary forces, as you mentioned, of the CAPF, we got within a year. It took us almost five years of persistent effort to get the first one going with the, the defense because the procedures are so cumbersome and it takes a long time. I think the way things are shaping with the new DPPs coming in, they're trying to cut down the state substantially. I remain optimistic on that. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, when I was going uh, through uh, some of the literature I have on your company, I realized that you have some very major projects with the smart cities, uh, uh, you know, project of the government of India as in the various states. So what is that? What are you doing for the smart city projects? Oh, not really big ones, but we do have some projects going on the smart cities, ma'am. And these are basically, we have two parts. We have a dedicated vertical which works on the IT side and especially on the surveillance and smart cities. And there, part one is that we, we undertake the role of system integration, uh, where we have in-house capabilities of integrating these complex platforms. Secondly, uh, there is a massive market going forward for small fuel cells to give backup power in smart cities across the world 
for your surveillance cameras, for your traffic management sensors, and other smart elements that are thrown across the city. So uh, in constrained and constricted, restricted spaces, providing a power solution, which is something else is very, very challenging. So this is where our compact and very, very small fuel cells are an ideal uh, at this thing. And this is a growing phenomena across the world where many cities worldwide are migrating to using fuel cells as backup power. And we've done the first few cases such in India now. And, uh, you know, every company, when it begins, has plans to capture the domestic market. And when it becomes a little old and a little bigger, it has plans for an international business. What are your plans? We already opened our first U.S. venture in 2020. And uh, we are already working on some of the most state-of-the-art, uh, you know, energy management programs in, in the Bay Area and the Silicon Valley in California. We are working with some of the biggest IT companies of the world. And they have chosen us amongst many big players to undertake complete energy management for their buildings, doing the design, the engineering, the turnkey execution supply, which includes solar, it includes batteries, it includes fuel cells, it includes IoT platforms, it includes integration with building management system. So we are already there. So we are already, I mean, trying to expand our uh, firstly footprint across uh, into the US markets and the North American markets to start with. Secondly, going forward, which will be probably phase two, once we get into uh, with our partners into some manufacturing of fuel cells, which, which is on the on the radar and it's likely to happen soon. So once that happens in phase two of that, after the Indian market, we also plan to look at trying to see if we can export these out of India to other countries. So does this also mean that, uh, you know, you will have manufacturing facilities uh, abroad at some point in time? I mean, not at the moment we can manufacture in India and then export. That would be a better okay. thing. But outside we would execute projects on our own. I mean, like we are already doing it in the US. Then we don't need existing because we are taking on the entire execution of the project and doing it. Uh, we have some people placed there now. The backend work, a lot of it is done in India also. And that's how we're doing that. Right, that's wonderful. You know, I think it's just such a wonderful thing to talk about. Uh, we, we also, as journalists, you know, know very less about this technology. And as and when we realize it was happening in India and, uh, you know, uh, uh, by a person who's from the army background, understands things, understands the needs. It's really wonderful. And uh, before we, uh, you know, wrap up, my last question to you would be, what are your uh, short-term and long-term plans? Short-term, uh, five years. Long-term, let's say 15 years. I really do not plan too much, ma'am. Firstly, <laughs> I'd let things happen. Honestly, I keep things very simple. I do not over plan my planning is minimalistic because plans invariably don't go as per this thing so i keep my mind is therefore not very cluttered and because i do not have too many things and i keep you know as things happening and of course we do think a little about it the first part is of course the first stage that we want to do this year is going to start manufacturing of these units with our partners in india under make in india that is part one part two is i mean if i look at very simply uh you know, investing more, substantially more in research and development to make more indigenous projects or uh, products on energy management. And of course, uh, slowly increasing our, you know, uh, the foothold and our businesses outside of India also. I mean, if I see this is what I would keep it, what are our plans as of now? You know, that was really wonderful. And uh, it's ignited that little spark in us also that, you know, there is, we used to always think alternative, alternative energy. Huh? So to traditional energy, there's a solution which is uh, wind and solar. Now we realize that this is something else and it's a solution to even the alternative energy. So uh, they also have their limitations. And this is, here is a technology which will let us fight those limitations and come to, you know, uh, sensibility where, you know, the industry and uh, I, I think even domesticity would understand that this is a, uh, you know, format where it would be wonderful to understand. I think, sir, we go ahead with it. And uh, when the next time we speak, I'm sure you will have more to tell us. And we will also understand the technology more. 
and would really want to know and understand at that stage that has India moved ahead? Has India come to a position where, uh, you know, we uh, now think of uh, solar and wind as past and fuel cell technology as a technology of the day. So wonderful. It was great speaking with you. And I take you back to the studios in Cyprus, sir, where Chatali is waiting for us. Uh, Chatali, back to you. A lot Thank of you. insights, a lot we got to know about your company, sir, as you said. FC Technology, yes, as the name is something very innovative, very new, the same kind of work you're also doing, providing energy, uh, fueling the country with the, the, the uh, renewable sources of energy. Thank you so much, sir. I hope uh, the, the good work that you are doing continues and flies high. Are all good wishes, ADU is all good wishes with the company. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Thank Rakhine. you, Angita and Chadali. Pleasure for me. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you very much, sir. Bye-bye.